Hey guys, and welcome back to their Unfiltered Gamer Card Game or Card Games Review. Today's games up on the tabletop are three games by Alcon Creative, Deuce Ex Machina, Argonauts, and Troy. These are all mythical games based in Greek and Roman culture of the gods and those heroes, uh, and there are each unique games that could represent either playing a two-player game that's competitive, or a one-to-four player cooperative, or a uh, two-to-four player competitive game. Uh, first, talk about Deus Ex Machina, which is going to be choosing one of four legendary heroes that will uh, take on the aid of the gods and other warriors to fight difficult or near-impossible tasks, scoring you victory points and hopefully winning you the game. We'll talk about Argonauts, where you'll be playing as Jason and um, his attempts to gather the Golden Fleece and working together with up to four players and up to a total of 16 different heroes. Uh, then we'll talk about the Battle of Troy, where you and an opponent will go head to head, placing down cards in the battle, flipping them over, and hopefully securing a victory by having the best setup in combination, uh, and then actually having your heroes attack each other as well. In each of these games, they're a little bit unique as to what you're going to be doing. They have similar concepts about how mechanics will work, um, but overall, they're completely separate games with a whole tied in theme. Let's go through Deuce X, then Argonauts, and then Troy and I'll tell you what I think about them. So first up on the table is Deuce Ex Machina. This is where you're going to be selecting one of the great heroes uh, and attempting to go on quests. There are four different heroes in this game with a front and a back and uh, two different important stats you'll be using, strength and cunning. Um, and then you're going to have the quests. Now how to set the game up. Choose a hero, Shuffle the three different decks, the god deck, the warrior deck, and the quest deck, and then reveal four gods, two of the different uh, warriors, and three quests. Each player is also going to get one of these cards here. These cards are actually like how you're going to be winning the game, what combination of cards you'll need, and how many victory points based on the number of players. So in a two-player game, if you were playing with this card, you would need a yellow, a red, a green, and a purple quest completed, as well as 19 victory points after reducing the sum of any negative guards that, guards that you might have used in the game. So after you've got your hero and you've got your card here, you're then going to begin with, every, with, uh, with the other players. Now, on your turn, you'll be able to select a god if you'd like and a warrior to work along with your hero to defeat a quest. And you'll basically check your red number and your blue number and compare it to the quest. You can also include any cards you've taken and any bonuses from those cards and attach them together. And if your numbers meet or exceed the quest you're attempting to complete, you will take that card and you will pass. The hero that you use will be flipped over and exhausted. It'll either be flipped over this way or the opposite way. Every time you use it, you're just going to flip it over. Or if you do not think you can beat a quest, you can just simply flip over your hero, hopefully from the exhausted side to the non-exhausted side. Then the next player will go and do the same thing, selecting from one of the quests. Quests always flip over when you've completed one, so do all the rest of the cards. Taking on with one of the gods and one of the warriors, utilizing their benefits and bonuses, and each of the gods and warriors have unique ways of gaining you benefits, whether it be cunning or strength, and trying to competitively secure the most quests with the most victory points with the required sum, as well as types from this card here. When you have met or exceeded the requirements for your victory condition, you flip over the card, reveal your cards, and then the sum of the total of all players will be met, and whoever has the most is the winner. And that is how you play the game, Deuce Ex Machina. Okay, now the Argonauts. So here we have the game Argonauts, the fabled Jason and the Argonauts, where Jason undertakes the task of retrieving the Golden Fleece with the help of and aid of his friends and the gods as he travels from one location to the next fighting mythical monsters, whether it be the Gorgon or the Cyclops or a dragon from the sea. Now in this game, you're basically going to get a team of four characters when you're playing for four player game. Each character, each player is going to get four of the different characters, whether it be Jason or Typhus or Hercules. And basically you're going to choose one of your four members of your team, all represented by a letter in the top right hand corner and exhaust it by flipping it over. You're always going to have one character exhausted and the other three available to you. And this game is about combinations. It's similar to the previous game where you're trying to, con you're trying to attach different values to each other to complete tasks. 
Basically what's gonna happen is cooperatively you'll reveal the top of a deck that you've actually formulated based on the rules. So the rules are very specific as to what cards go where in this deck, as well as event cards being sprinkled around throughout it. And you'll reveal it and you'll do what it says. Oh no, sickness, there's losses. And you'll suffer whatever the losses are. And there's treatments. You can exhaust a mystic to ignore one of the above losses. Now, uh, typically speaking, losses are something you'll flip over. However, there are ways to prevent that. And you're gonna have different types of resources in the game, of food and these shields and the, the ships here and then these favors. And if you flip over all of one type, you can lose the game. So you're trying to get through all of the cards before um, you run out of resources of any specific type. And so I can go, oh, okay, I actually have a mystic. So I can go ahead and flip that mystic over and then I'll only have to lose one of these guys here. And then you'll just keep going through the deck and uh, all players are gonna work together trying to accomplish these objectives. And eventually you're gonna run into to the different minions or the different like mystical monsters like harpies and they're gonna have two different types of combat. You can choose to do either left or right, and you can work together cooperatively with everybody else to secure a victory. Each player is going to select one of their legendary heroes and exhaust it and add up all the stats together. And if you meet or exceed the stats of the monster, you'll defeat it. You'll suffer any losses uh, and or you'll face defeat if you cannot actually defeat it and then you'll move on. And you'll just keep going through this deck here, going through and dealing with thunderstorms, maybe the wrath of the gods, or reaching port, and then being able to, from the following, choose two gathering supplies, repairing your ship, and healing your crew. And if you can get through the end of the deck before you suffer any of the losses from your specific stats here, you will win the game. That's how it plays, last one. The last game I've got here is Troy by Homer's The Iliad, where you play against the Romans and Greeks in a battle. Uh, in this game here, you're gonna select a play as either the Romans or the Greeks, and it's gonna be a round of a uh, four round game in which you're going to be flipping over the round card to see what happens in the duel. Uh, and it'll tell you like, oh, the Trojan player always plays first in all phases of the battle, and his hero takes plus one comet points in the duel. So there's positives and negatives for each side. Uh, then you're gonna flip over a random hero. In this case, we got Penthen Leah, and then we've got Achilles, and we're going to select the cards given to us by them. It says, okay, I've got a four, a three, and a one. So I'll take my four, my three, and my one. And I'm also going to have these cards here, all four of them. And I'm going to start, and there, there's going to be Myrmidons, there's the Cretan Archers, the Argian Spearmen, and the Mechian Chariots. Chariots, and I'll place them down in front of my opponent secretly. After I have placed mine down, then my opponent will do the same thing. And in this case here, he has a three, a two, and a one. And he's gonna have these four cards, the same ones that I have, and he'll select secretly where to place them as well. So each of them is gonna have their own little combat. After we've placed these guys down, we'll take the numbered value cards and we can place them on top of any of the cards we want or adjacent to. And then the other player will do the same thing based on turn order. And then finally, you'll take one of these battle cards. These battle cards are similar to all of these, but they select one specific uh, combat unit. In this case, I could select, maybe I want a plus three to my archers, and I'll go ahead and place this over here in the corner. You can only select one, though, and the opponent can do the same thing also by selecting, oh, I'll take this, my, I'll reinforce my Amazons. This portion of the battle has been concluded now. After you've placed your four main cards, your three bonus cards, and your extra bonus card, you'll reveal them in order flipping them to see who has the most combat. And you know, flip them, even your bonuses as well. And you flip them all over, you go, okay, my chariots are fighting your archers. My chariots have a five plus a one, which is six. Your archers have a two plus a one, which is a three. No bonuses over here, I win this one. Move on to the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and you go through all of that. After you've gone through the battle, you'll have a score. Maybe I've got, I've won two or three of the battles and maybe you've only won one. We'll fight with our characters here. Okay, my character has a strength of eight and yours has a strength of six. I can now take a god card from my hand and a bonus card from my hand if I want as well and increase the power of my hero. Same thing as this side and you will do the same as well. And then you're gonna reveal, okay, I chose these two, that's a total of seven, plus my six is 13, and I flip mine over, which is eight and five, that is a total of 13, plus eight is 21, which means I win the duel. 
Now, if you also look on your character in the very bottom portion of the character, it will tell you what your score is going to increase by from the entire battle. So if I got three and you have one, um, based on who you defeat. So in this case, uh, Achilles, if he were to fight this character here, is going to get one. However, if this character beat Achilles, he would get three points, or she would get three points. So you can gain additional points, which can actually push you over the top. So if I won three and you only won one, but you actually won with this character here, that's gonna give you three more points. Three plus one is four, three plus zero, I lose the game. Uh, and we'll move on to the next round. You play all four of these rounds, revealing the new different types of event cards uh, and seeing what happens there. Uh, you'll lose any of the heroes that you've used. All of the one-time use, the god cards, the warrior cards, and the bonus cards are gonna be removed as well. And then you'll simply rinse and repeat and play all four of the rounds. Whoever has beaten the most battles at the end of the game is the winner. Okay, those are the three different games, Troy, Argonauts, and Deuce Ex Machina. Let's talk about them. Okay, so let's talk about each of the games uh, individually and then kind of as a whole. The first one is Deuce Ex Machina, the one we first talked about, where you're basically selecting a hero as well as you'll be gathering warriors and gods and attempting to defeat quests. Now, it's a very straightforward game. You see three quests that you can select from, you see what your character is capable of, and then you check to see based on what type of combination you can make from the warriors and gods that will allow you to basically defeat certain things. Now, it might be better to kind of skip a turn and flip and go for something else if you can't beat anything, but it's almost always better to score at least something. At the end of the game, god cards that you've acquired are gonna be negative points, but it's still usually worth it to get something out of the deal because even if you get a two point value uh, quest and you use one god, that's still one point closer to victory. Now, there are certain requirements. You wanna make sure that you hit those goals of the different colored quests. And of course, the more points, the better with the little amount of use in the gods as possible. Uh, this game is all about combining those stats and defeating what is available to you. That's, that's how it plays out. Uh, there's not as much choice in the game as I'd probably like, but what's very interesting about it is the different kinds of selections and combinations that you might not see as you're playing the game and as you kind of start to piece out, okay, this character goes with this one here, and this one here actually combines with this god, which will net me the available points. There's more than one time in the game where I was playing and there was a combination I, I did I saw but didn't see and I didn't utilize and thusly I kind of skipped a turn and lost the way I was going to actually score even more points and then my wife she'd see a combo and she'd be like oh this is how you can get this points and I didn't even notice that no these actually all link together and score you what you need in order to require to defeat the quest here um it's probably my least favorite of the bunch but it is a solid game it's very straightforward it's an easy play it's a quick play and it's a game in which it kind of flows in to the Jason and the Argonauts game um, and I think that one's probably my next favorite game, which is Jason, so Argonauts. Argonauts is basically a team game, but you feel like you have your own team in your team of players you're playing with. Now, of course, four players is the best. It gives you all the different characters for everybody. And you basically are trying to combine characters, just like in the um, Deus Ex Machina game, but now you're combining them to defeat quests, and the quests will cause resource loss. It's a little different each time, but it still meets the following story criteria because the game is kind of set uh, where as you go through the deck, new cards pop up, but there are intentional spots where you're always going to be dealing with certain things. You'll always be fighting the Harpies. You'll always be fighting some Plagades. You'll always be going to Clocus, or you'll always be uh, the Dragon's Teeth and fighting the Dragon. You're going to be pursued at some point, sirens are going to come out, and then at the very end of the game, uh, you'll, get, you'll, you'll deal with Talos. And so that always is going to be how it works out in the game. But the unique combination of the different events, which is always the same events, but in different orders, will change how you select your character. Selecting characters is very important. It can result in you trying, if you go over, you can result in like you taking a lot more losses and suffering. It's a very challenging game, and I've gotten through, first I got through like almost a little over halfway, and then three-fourths of the way and then back to halfway and then I won and then I won and then I lost again so there's a, a, a definite amount of luck based on the events in the deck and if you get enough negative ones stacked against you it can be very challenging um, and it's also about selecting the right characters at the right time realizing who was best fit for what job and how to utilize your character's abilities when you need to in a pinch. The last game is Troy. Troy is basically a 
face down combat game. It feels a little bit like war where you're kind of flipping over cards and then they kind of battle each other. But in this case, it's a game of wits. You are going to get your four separate armies. You're going to select them in any areas that you want and then you're gonna add those bonuses to them. And your opponent is gonna see that as you do it. So it first starts off as luck. And then based on where you place your bonuses, your opponent has to kind of decide, are you bluffing me? Where are you placing these bonuses, these reinforcements? You see the original reinforcements and you know where they're gonna go, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna be a good choice for you. And then you don't see one. And then when you reveal, everything is kind of foretold, which you think, oh, okay, it's done and over with. But the next round, you start to realize, okay, last round, this is what they did. And so this round, are they gonna do the same thing? Are they gonna change it up? So there's constant changes in the game. And also, you have a limited number of certain cards, these extra, extra bonus bonuses, the ones that give you a plus two to any of the different characters that you, you know, plus one or plus three. But once they're gone, they're gone for good. And now you know, okay, their spearmen, you know, their myrmidons are very unlikely to have that bonus now because they no longer, <laughs> they're no longer in the game as far as the bonus card. So maybe I think this is his character Character here and I can add this bonus and I can defeat it and then you throw that on top of it and you're actually going to have to deal with the combat for the warriors as well warriors can make all the difference in the game as well if one defeats another if one is supposed to win against another and there's an upset that can change the entire battle and then of course you have the four different characters that you're going to be utilizing and they have their strengths and weaknesses versus other characters and they'll meet certain bonuses that you can also imply on them. But remember, once you run out of them, they're gone as well. You can only call on the aid of the gods a certain number of times. Um, and yeah, I, 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 this game, it combines that classic type of like fighting mechanism with a whole nother battle element and then there's repercussions from one round to the next and that works really, really, really well for me. Um, additionally, too, there's a nice little amount of, I kind of wish they had a few more uh, different types of events to take place. These mainly just explain like who goes first in the round, balancing it out. Um, but yeah, overall, all of these games are a lot of fun. They all feel a little bit similar because they're all utilizing different stat points to battle, whether it is other players, to battle against a deck itself, or to combine in order to complete quests. And each game is also unique in that one is a two-player combat game, one's a one to four cooperative game, and over here is a competitive game. So you have this kind of, once you go from one to another, you kind of, kind of have an idea of how to play. It makes it a lot easier as far as explaining the games. Story. This, this is filled with theme. Each of these is filled with the Iliad and the Odyssey, the Argonauts, the Jason and the Golden Fleece, and then of course the Battle of Troy. Um, of the, the, each, each of the battle is in here from Deus Ex Machina is very cool. Having having unique heroes fight things they never actually fought when it should have been another specific hero is, is super fun. It's, it's all tied with excellent theme. The artwork, excellent as well. I loved all the art from Argonauts and all the different characters and their strengths and weaknesses as well as their abilities. I felt like they did a really good job of kind of balancing everything out and making me feel like I was going through the story, which is awesome. More of this? Yes, yes, please. I love Greek. I have loved Roman history. This is my favorite type of theme. I, I don't know why. I've just always loved it. Man, I got to go through college and get a minor in it. And so it's just kind of been this kind of attachment to me that I've had. And so if you love a chunk of theme in tiny little boxes, they're very straightforward games. So it's nothing like super complex or ultra strategic or hour long games. No, it's, it's very straightforward games that have unique twists to them that all kind of compile with a unique story and a unique theme. Then check out Troy, Argonauts, and Deuce Ex Machina. They're really cool little games, and I think you'll enjoy them. I'm gonna keep them on my shelf for a bit. Hopefully I get the completed version so they look a little nicer because this came from a very far off distance away, but I, I like these games a lot. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you're interested in this game or games, go ahead and check out the link down below in the description, or you can go ahead and pick them up on Kickstarter. And if you want, if you think we've earned it and you've watched maybe more than one or two of our videos, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button as well so you can see new and interesting titles of games just like these. And of course, we have a live stream every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST on Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube, as well on Whatnot on Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. PST. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to venturing in to all of these wonderful games with you next time.